This is going to be my first post anti statism circa 2011 video. It's going to be about Gandhi. I'm not really going to talk about a lot of his views because there's a controversial nature over his views. Like, some points we don't know if he ag still agrees with or he's pretending to be ag agree with them or that he agreed with them at some point but he stopped agreeing towards the end of his life. So I'm not going to argue about the forced integrations that he believed in because he also advocated for segregations on a national level. Instead, I'm going to make an analogy to Gandhi and the nation, since Gandhi was more of a nationalistic icon and an icon of the state. And basically, what I want to prove here is that it takes more than ideology, I mean, it takes more than force to run a state, or it takes more than force to run a nation. It also takes a lot of ideology to run a nation. And with Gandhi, he used all ideology and no force. And for state, states use, states could actually use no force and all ideology. And the end result, like both cases, would be a disastrous failure. Constant colossal war outbreaks and an unnatural secessions between groups that should have succeeded a long time ago. Again, I've proceeded with my disbelief and the support of the state. I believe that the states fundamentally cause people because there's no means of in different nationalistic gradients having laws settled only be used to settle disputes not favor or bias over one partisan or individual entity or system that there would be a lot of conflict and this conflict would be sort of this thing where you can either the state could actually have domestic suicide or it could have wage wars foreignly and could be killed or undergo statewide homicide, statewide homicide, where the states are killed. And so far, that's kind of the analogy I'll compare Gandhi to. Gandhi's like Gandhi's the, the icon of a peaceful nation, then if you equate that to the state, the state that has no force in its means would still have a bad end result for its flaws. That pacifism and these things are just means and they're just symptoms of something that's bad, but whether good or not, if the end result is something that is in the nature of this horrible thing, then whatever flaws or imperfections that are an impossibility will lead to its destruction. And I hate using this cliched word, but chaos as well. Anyway. I have a lot of different ideas that I could use for an anti-statism 2012 circa, or anti-statism circa 2012, so I'd be happy to speak more about this issue, make a more simplified version, where I naturally use some of the elements I've used in my book. Overall, I'm going to evaluate the point of this thing, that even if the means of a state are good, if the state center results because of ultimate flaws of the state are bad, then the state faces some possibility that makes it collapse, and the same thing for a bad nation. And that's basically it.